you, uh, especially to the Jam Beyond team for doing an amazing job. Um, it's pretty incredible that we have within the community folks that are able to do an in-person event incredibly well. And then uh, given the uh, exceptional circumstances to be able to shift gears and do an online event, which requires a completely different set of logistics. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what the next 24 hours holds for Jay and Beyond uh, as a participant. And I am incredibly honored uh, to be here presenting in the first slot. So thank you very much, David, for the invitation. And um, I, I'm just really looking forward to what the next 24 hours holds. Uh, so with that, um, I am excited to see all of these smiling, familiar faces that we know from within the community. Uh, but one of the challenges of this format is if we want to do a presentation, uh, it kind of takes over the screen. So I'm going to uh, launch my presentation now and we'll get underway. So, and David, if you wouldn't mind just confirming that you have my uh, presentation up on the screen for the participants. Sure. Uh, actually, you don't. Stand by. <laughs> I promised him some pretty flowers before I started the presentation today. There we go. Okay, yeah, something's happening. It's like set, set, setting up the projector in an in-person event, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> of course. Good, we should be seeing Essential Joomla right now, is that correct? Yes, indeed. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so my presentation today is on Essential Joomla. Uh, I love language. I love uh, how language is used to describe different things and different events. And uh, certainly the current uh, global crisis has established a, a set of words and language that are all its own. Um, so I'll be sharing uh, with you my perspective or, or what my experience has been just a little bit uh, from here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the United States. Um, and I'll be interested uh, to be connecting with other folks uh, as we have been, of course, in recent weeks and months learning about what your experience has been like as well. But one of the words that is most used here in the United States uh, in talking about our response to the crisis is the word essential. And I thought that would provide a good framework for having the conversation uh, for what for me is uh, this evening. And I know it's very late uh, for those of you that are watching from Europe. And um, uh, so really just wanted to focus on what is essential about the Joomla experience. As David said, uh, my name is Brian Mitchell. I am the president of Open Source Matters, Inc., which is the legal and financial uh, steward of the Joomla project. Um, I did just take over the uh, role of office on May 18th. I was elected on March 24th, uh, but I was leaving one board position as treasurer and moving into another as president. So we needed time. Uh, and a special thank you to Luca Marzo for coordinating a yet another election for Open Source Matters uh, to backfill that position of treasurer. Um, so I've been uh, the president for just over a month now. Uh, uh, start, excuse me, yeah, uh, about two months now, actually. Um, uh, if you have any questions about my presentation or would just like to connect, uh, if it's official Open Source Matters business, you can send it to president at opensourcematters.org. And just know that that's a new kind of account that we're using that when I'm done with my term as president, uh, whenever that happens to be, I will hand that account on to the next president. And that way they will have access to all the communications that I've had as president previously. It's just a good way to provide some continuity. If you wanna reach out to me in a more personal way, uh, you can do so at brian.mitchell at community.joomla.org. And I'm an occasional uh, Twitter user. You can find my comments uh, periodically at intergenerator. So essential, this is a look that uh, is not too unfamiliar for most of us at this point. What does it mean when we say something is essential or someone is essential? Uh, the first way that this word has been used extensively in the United States is talking about business. Um, when we knew we wanted to begin social distancing and encouraging people to be staying safer at home, which is another phrase that's been used here pretty frequently, we identified certain businesses as being essential. The unfortunate result of that is the it implies that some other businesses are non-essential, which can be a real challenge for workers, uh, because if you work for an essential business, now you've been labeled as crucial to the functioning of the economy. What does that mean for everybody else? 
um, for the hairdressers, that uh, for the dentists, uh, for folks that just have not been able to provide the services that is the livelihood for themselves and for their families. And so it leaves us with the uh, unfortunate implication that uh, do we have people that are essential and people that are less essential? And I know within the Joomla community, we, of course, would uh, have a resounding no to that statement that, uh, of course, everybody's essential. And uh, so I wanted to spend some time reflecting tonight on how Joomla can respond to that in a way that acknowledges the value and the dignity of everybody that's involved with the project uh, and everybody that the project impacts. Uh, I shared with you at the beginning of my presentation that I love language. Uh, I love how we describe things. And I was thinking about it over dinner tonight. Um, we were having cheeseburgers and thinking about what it means to be essential. And I was reminded that the German word for eating is Essen. Now, I don't know if there's a direct uh, connection between the history of the word Essen and the word essential, but I'd like to think so. Eating is a pretty important thing for all of us. And that got me thinking about other cultures and other languages um, where that word has meaning. And uh, I have a daughter who is uh, 16 years old. She's in high school here in the United States. And she um, loves to wear crazy socks. Um, so here's some banana socks. But I didn't pick this picture um, because of the, that particular word. No, it's not that at all. It's the strange realization that when you spell the word socks in English, it actually translates into Spanish as ASOCKS, ASOCKS, which of course is, um, it's an imperfect translation, but it is what it is, or there it is, or that's it. The ASO, ASO, essen, essence, this sense of like substance, of meaning, of something profound, something that sustains us, something that carries us through. So to go from my stomach to my feet, uh, to my head and my spirit, um, I then thought of Thomas Aquinas and a huge part of his philosophy uh, and his writings um, focus specifically on the nature of being and of essence. De ente et essentia is one of his uh, great works talking about the distinction between being and having essence. So now that my feet are warm, my stomach is full, and we've contemplated a few of the loftier things with one of the great philosophers, we come to the realization that essence is a big deal. Uh, it's central, it's core, it sustains. What on earth does all of that have to do with Joomla? I'd like to spend the rest of my time uh, with you tonight, a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll spend uh, most of the next half hour um, just sharing some of my thoughts on what I think the essence or the core of Joomla is and what it means. And uh, then we'll allow a little bit of time uh, after my comments, if people have comments they'd like to share with me or thoughts, concerns, questions, reflections. So what does essence have to do with Joomla? Well, we know this, uh, one of the first ways we think of Joomla is as software uh, or as code. And I was pleased to, uh, as I was putting this presentation together, uh, one of the first responses I got as I was looking for some Joomla code is not only is this uh, Spanish, um, but somebody's doing a 3.9.16 install of Joomla over Ubuntu. So I was pleased to see that this is relatively recent and current, and I wasn't pulling up some like 1.5 code or something. Um, so we can talk about Joomla as code. Um, the thing that's striking to me is uh, sometimes we think of the software in the same way we think of other products in the technology space. But Joomla is not like the latest iPhone. It's not like the newest PlayStation. It's not just a collection of features to dazzle and wonder. Joomla is a tool, and it's a tool with a purpose. It's code with an essence. What is the essence of that code, of the software? What is essential about Joomla as code? To answer that question, I want to use another tool by way of comparison. And this is not the usual WordPress bash. I actually think the Joomla community can benefit a lot and learn a lot from uh, WordPress. I think WordPress probably has um, some insights and some things they could gain with greater collaboration with the Joomla community as well. So my point in bringing this up is if we understand the essence of one, it's easier to understand the essence of the other in that we can do a little bit of compare and contrast. So what is the essential difference? Well, this is a fun infographic that I found um, talking about what happens when you load a WordPress page. 
um, and all of the steps uh, that your browser goes or that the server goes through to render uh, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS uh, for your browser. And uh, start off by loading the wp-config PHP file. There's some default constants that are set. We connect to the cache. We connect to the database. Plugins are loaded. There's rewrite rules. We finally get to functions.php, and then eventually we end up getting to our template. We load the template, and then we do action shutdown, and finally we have our JavaScript, our CSS, and our HTML rendered. In all of these steps, I was looking for the essence of WordPress, and this, the step that stood out most to me was number 11, load active plugins. I think this is the piece that really distinguishes uh, WordPress from how Joomla operates. Uh, for a long time, there was uh, this understanding that WordPress was a blog trying to be a, C a, a content management system, uh, trying to be a full-blown CMS. And the way it achieved that was by taking its pages or its posts and using plugins to inject short codes, which would pull in PHP that would render some additional functionality within the content. So you basically had a blog that was uh, creating additional functionality that was injected through these plugins uh, to make things happen. Well, of course, Joomla has a, a plugin system of its own, um, and it, system plugins in particular uh, function at least philosophically in the same way. Um, but the thing that distinguishes Joomla is unlike loading all of the components, uh, it only loads one at a time. Uh, it, it doesn't load everything all at once. And I love actually uh, non-SEF URLs because you get a much better sense of what's happening, of how the page is being put together and how it's rendered. And the most genius part of the uh, Joomla router and the Joomla um, system for rendering content, I think, is this first call of the component. What's interesting about this is unlike a blog, um, Tom Content completely gets out of the way if I'm using com banners or com contacts. So it loads essentially a completely different application from what we might use for blogging or for sharing text-based articles. And for me, I think that's the key because it really flags in the same way that, that we could talk about WordPress potentially being a blog that's adding content management system-like functionality. We could also talk about Joomla posing as a content management system, but really, I would argue it's more of a web application platform than a content management system. Because every component you load opens up a completely new universe of functionality and sets aside all of the other functionality that you might have running on your site. So it gives us an opportunity to load different applications into the same website in a way that's kind of unique in this space. So I would argue at its core that Joomla presents us with access control through the user manager. It presents us with an installer so that we can decide what functionalities we want to include on our site, whether those be plugins or components, and of course, templates and modules for uh, display purposes. But even com content in this frame, oh, and a router as well, um, so that uh, we can route traffic uh, properly through the website. So in this framework, even com content becomes almost optional, depending upon how you want to use uh, the platform. And we're starting to see more of this. This is the second or third, at least, Joomla conference in a row where I'm seeing presentations on using an Angular front end. I know that's coming up later here at JN Beyond. Using Angular on the front end and uh, running Joomla on the back end uh, to manage all of the things I talked about in terms of access control and routing. Uh, we have, uh, I, I saw at least one or two presentations on uh, the implications of progressive web apps for Joomla uh, and how we can configure Joomla to take advantage of those best practices uh, in the, the sphere of progressive web apps. Of course, we could talk about other JavaScript frameworks uh, or even Joomla as a headless content management system. Uh, just as an aside, uh, there's an amazing project uh, from one of the Joomla uh, co-founders, uh, Johan uh, Janssen's has put together uh, something called Joomla Tools Pages, which I think is an amazing response to the JavaScript frameworks. Um, it's, it's rendering uh, pretty much whatever you need. It can pull in anything. Um, I'll make sure uh, that I include a link to that in my notes. Uh, it's, if you're interested 
in uh, the JavaScript framework. So I would encourage you to have a look at uh, the Joomla tools pages uh, that he's created and posted to GitHub. He's been working on it for about two years. Phenomenal piece of code. So uh, back to the core of the presentation. At its core, Joomla provides us access control. It provides us an installer. It provides us a router. Um, which is the skeleton or the framework that allows us to attach other applications and additional functionality based on our needs. So if that gives us an overview of uh, Joomla as code, of course, the other C word that we often hear uh, referencing Joomla is Joomla as community. Now, it's super tempting for me to go grab a picture from a previous conference, and this is where I would typically do the big conference group picture. Um, but what was interesting to me is uh, even as we were, uh, th there's a speaker's lounge set up where we can be sharing comments with each other before and after our presentations. And one of the other speakers had shared that he probably wouldn't have been able to attend uh, JN Beyond this year uh, had it been held in Lisbon. Um, and so on the one hand, uh, this type of conference presents a unique challenge to Joomla as community. How do we connect with each other? Um, how do we converse? We know the benefit of the conversations that happen between sessions and after sessions and over meals. Um, so it does present a unique challenge, but there are some silver linings to it um, in that it, it forces us uh, to focus more on um, connecting with people that can't be there physically. Um, so it's a great opportunity. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Joomla as community, but of the uh, areas I'm going to focus on, it's actually the, the smallest one of the three. So Joomla as community. Here's the other interesting observation. This year is a little bit of back to the future uh, for Joomla. In talking to some of the folks that were developers of Joomla in the very early days, um, I realized that it was actually very long into the process before they got together physically. Um, there was a lot of work that was done on Mambo and on Joomla uh, with the earliest developers before they had a chance to ever meet in person. Uh, in thinking about that a little further, I went back and did some research and uh, was interested to learn that Joomla 3, and this is memory, I, I've been using Joomla since the Mambo days, so I sort of lived this history, but it's interesting to go back and realize how this played out and how it's uh, reflective of the community. Joomla 3 was released in September of 2012. The very first Joomla World Conference was San Jose in November of 2012. Joomla 3 existed before there was ever a Joomla World Conference. That is a striking piece of information to me striking in how much groundwork was laid and how much was done before we ever had the huge events that uh, so many of us have come to know and love as part of the Joomla experience. Clearly, there was a strong sense of purpose and a strong sense of community that drove the Joomla project in those early days. Um, yes, there were a lot of people working alone by themselves late into the night writing code, but there was a lot of activity to be creating the platform to be promoting it and to get it, give it the exposure um, that allowed it to reach the popularity that it ultimately did. So I was just blown away when I realized that Joomla 3 happened before the first world conference. That's also indicative of the fact that Joomla 3 was and is an amazing piece of software. It's easy to take for granted all of the minor point releases and all of the features that have been added. Uh, in this major point release version of the software. And I think it's a real testament uh, of what a solid piece of code it is um, that it's gotten us to this point. I know that we are all super excited to hear what I think is the second to last presentation from George. Uh, I don't wanna steal any of his thunder and I don't have any of the details uh, beyond uh, the fact that I know he's going to be sharing with us the current state of Joomla 4. Uh, and I know uh, that it's very positive and it's good news. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and I'm just really uh, thankful to that entire, to the entire production team, to the folks that have been part of that release. Um, the insanity of maintaining minor point releases in Joomla 3 and keeping everything synced up and progress moving along in Joomla 4. It's uh, truly an amazing and impressive feat. Um, so thank you to all the folks that have contributed to that. So 
that talks about how we did community, uh, much like we're doing it tonight or today or this morning, uh, when we can't be together and yet we are still living that, that uh, ethos of Joomla, that all together uh, of that experience. One of the things I did um, want to point out in my understanding of what Joomla as community means is what it's not. Joomla is not open source matters. Open source matters is not Joomla. And one of the things I had to work through, and I continue to work through um, as a relatively new president to the organization, is uh, we borrow from the structures that are around us in trying to understand uh, how these two entities relate to each other. And uh, especially here in the United States, whether it's Barack Obama or Donald Trump, uh, we very much have uh, what I would refer to as the imperial presidency, uh, the person at the front of the room that's dictating to everyone else how things should be and everyone else falling in line to serve that leader and their vision. That is not the relationship that Joomla and open source do have or should have. Um, open source matters exists to serve Joomla, to provide a foundation of legal and financial stability and to preserve the values uh, for the, to preserve the values that Joomla uh, holds at its very center, the essence of the community. And so it turns that model of the Imperial Presidency or the Leadership Council or the Board of Directors, it turns that model on its head. Joomla does not exist to serve open source matters and its agenda. It's exactly the opposite. Open Source Matters, Inc., the Board of Directors and all of the leadership structure and policy exists to serve Joomla, the code and the community. And I think it's it's a, a huge difference in terms of how those two entities relate to each other and understanding them in that way. And I think it's uh, important that we understand and embrace that more. I wasn't around for the great transition. I hear a lot of talk about it. I know an immense amount of work went into creating the current structure uh, uh, for what open source matters is. Uh, so I know a ton of work has been done. I know uh, we need to continue to do additional work um, so that we can be uh, fulfilling, fulfilling more completely our role in supporting Joomla as code and Joomla as community. So that's an overview of my understanding of the essence or the core of Joomla as code, a web application platform that provides an amazing skeleton with tons of flexibility. It can be uh, so many different things and, and provide so many different solutions uh, for developers that are knowledgeable and how to take advantage of it, uh, in addition uh, to the community piece as well. I wanna add a third word to the conversation tonight, a third C. Um, it's one that I've talked about, but haven't used this particular language for before, and it's the concept of Joomla as culture. Um, Joomla as culture. At first, it seems like it's a direct connection um, to the community portion, but I think it really is the connector between community in code. Um, and I think it's an important part of where I'd like to see uh, Joomla move next. And uh, certainly during the q and I would love to get uh, others feedback uh, on this concept. Um, I'm looking at it not just as it relates to Joomla, but I just got done sharing my understanding of the relationship between open source matters and the Joomla project. And understanding that if we're going to talk about Joomla as culture, and if open source matters exist to serve that culture, well, what does that mean for the culture of open source matters uh, as an entity? Often, uh, when I've come to events in the past, the role of the president, uh, there's usually an opening keynote, much like tonight, uh, where the president provides a list of metrics that talks about the number of downloads uh, that Joomla has had, uh, the number of active installs that we're aware of, uh, the number of languages that it's been translated into. Um, those are all great pieces of information. It's very exciting. Joomla is certainly a huge project that has had massive impact uh, on the internet. I think there are metrics, and in, 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 I, I don't want to um, communicate that, that those um, numbers don't matter, uh, but my concern is they're trailing. They tell us what we've done in the past. And what I'm looking for is the numbers and the indicators that give us a sense of where we should be going into the future. So I wanna introduce some additional metrics uh, that matter 
uh, in terms of being more forward looking in how we can uh, assure the success of Joomla, not just in the present moment, uh, but for many, many years to come. And I think one of the most important metrics that we have to address and to answer that question is how many active volunteers do we have? How many active volunteers are contributing to the project? Now, my interest in that question is not just how do we get more hands on deck working hard so we can get more work done. My interest in that number is that it reflects how many people's lives have been impacted by Joomla. It's not a scorecard to say how many people are working. It's a scorecard that says how many people are inspired, are motivated, have been moved by the impact that Joomla has had on their lives, that they want to grow the project and share it with others. So I think that's one of the most important indicators. There's been a ton of work done, especially in the last month or so, uh, with the Joomla Volunteers Portal. I will start by focusing on the number that I mentioned, which is the number of active volunteers. 1571, there's not a, a hardcore audit of the volunteers portal to confirm, but this is a good uh, back of the napkin indication of how many folks we have that are working on the project. And there's certainly opportunities to improve its uh, correctness or accuracy, but I think it's a good starting point to the conversation. It's a good reflection of culture. Some of the work that I was talking about, um, I know there's a team that just recently rolled out Joomla ID. For those of you that are actively involved in the project and have a million and one logins for the forum, for the volunteers portal, for the Joomla extensions directory, for the Joomla resources directory, there's a push to provide uh, essentially one identification so that you can have one login for all of those properties. And when you update one in one place, it'll be updated everywhere across Joomla. Uh, it's it's uh, taken a lot of work. Uh, it Right now, I understand it to be active on the volunteers portal. So it was just launched within the last few weeks. Um, and perhaps uh, there are other speakers at the JMB on conference that can provide more information about that. But it's just a great indication of uh, how people are working hard to uh, improve usability within the Joomla community, not just on the software itself, um, but within the tools that we use to collaborate with each other. So a good starting point is how many uh, volunteers do we have actively contributing to the project? Another good data point would be how many people do we have excited about volunteering to serve as leaders? Now, I know there's a little bit of a running joke when somebody uh, runs for a position and wins election. Uh, it's a combination of uh, congratulations, and I'm sorry. And I actually would love to see that shift more um, to a posture of thank you. Um, uh, people, it, this isn't about uh, the victor and the vanquished when we hold these elections. It's an opportunity for us as members of the community to support and affirm uh, what we'd like to see out of the organization in terms of culture, in terms of leadership, uh, in terms of people serving others uh, within the community. And so uh, I think one of the best indicators of that is when we start to see more people that are excited about the opportunity to volunteer, uh, to serve in leadership positions, um, not for the glory of it, uh, but for the opportunity to serve uh, from a, a posture of gratitude. Uh, and part of that success will come in reflecting on how well we do at encouraging and supporting each other in our efforts. Um, competition uh, can be positive in that it can we can work with each other to bring out the best in others, but sometimes it can also be very destructive. And I would love to see uh, our election process uh, start to reflect uh, the values that I've talked about as part of um, my election process in terms of collaboration, building respect for each other, a stronger sense of community. And those are, um, questions I'd like to follow. Um, they're questions uh, that are important specifically for open source matters because they're the direct responsibility of open source matters. Joomla as code and Joomla as community have so much to offer for people that are making, looking to make a difference in the world. Open source matters exists to create space and an environment where those people can be successful, where they can flourish. They, and by they, I mean we, can do amazing things. The formula is simple, 
uh, but it's not easy. That's a formula that if you've heard me speak at any Joomla event, you've heard me speak uh, on this uh, because I bring it up every time. It's uh, the reason I ran uh, for a leadership position myself with Open Source Matters. And uh, I think it's the key to the ongoing and future success of Joomla as a project. And of course, it's uh, supporting a sense of freedom uh, for people everywhere. Uh, we can talk about the four freedoms at the general public license, um, but also freedom of expression within the community to share your thoughts uh, in ways that are honest and constructive. It's an opportunity uh, to uh, balance that sense of freedom with a sense of equality. Um, uh, different people uh, have different um, personalities in terms of how they speak out about things. Uh, English is the official language of the project. We need to work hard to make sure that everybody from every culture has an opportunity to participate. There's been a ton of amazing work done on accessibility uh, within especially Joomla 4. I know there's some great sessions coming up on accessibility. Um, these are all profound issues uh, related to freedom and equality, things that we should acknowledge and celebrate as a reflection of our core values. Trust working together in relationship with trust. And again, uh, competition can be great, but are we working uh, to promote ourselves or are we working to promote the project? And we need to do that in the spirit of trust. And of course we have a, a value that speaks of community. Uh, that's a reflection of one of the C's that I talked about earlier. Collaboration, these are a little bit more straightforward and easy to understand and hopefully easy to identify when we're reflecting them and living them well in our policies as open source matters and in our actions uh, with others within the volunteer community. Usability, uh, this one has been a particular focus of my conversations because it was the one that was the most confusing to me. Um, the rest seemed focused on culture. Usability initially seemed to me to be focused on the software. Is it easy to use? And of course it applies to that. Um, and I've talked about it in regards to our three primary audiences. That's extension developers. Is Joomla easy for extension developers to expand upon? Is it easy for site creators um, to, to provide uh, great solutions for their clients? And is it easy for content authors to be managing um, the, and working within the sites once they're built? So those are all usability issues, but I've also come to understand usability in the context of community. How hard is it to engage? If you're new to Joomla, how do you get involved? How do you volunteer? How welcoming is that experience? Uh, usability from the perspective of starting out in leadership positions, how welcoming is that experience? So these are all uh, important issues that I think are crucial to the future success of not just growing our culture, uh, but growing the project overall. And then of course, transparency, uh, which is a reflection of open source. Um, it's more than that, um, but it's a great starting point. Um, but our licensing and everything that we're about is a reflection of transparency. Uh, this is a huge value, of course, uh, for the board of directors um, in how we're dealing with different situations and issues, how we're dealing with our finances, uh, how we're resolving legal concerns, how we enter into partnerships and relationships uh, with other entities that are excited about the work that's happening within the Joomla community and want to be there and be supportive of it. So that's an overview of my understanding. Uh, again, the formula is simple, but it's not easy. Um, so that's my understanding of how culture can relate to open source matters as the entity that exists to serve the broader project and the broader community. And again, these things are the responsibility of open source matters to set the tone, to live those values, to, to uh, create the example um, so that we can continue to grow that sense of culture. So finally, community, code, culture, uh, open source matters uh, that is Joomla. I did wanna uh, just provide uh, a, a quick acknowledgement. Uh, most of the photos that were used in this presentation were from Unsplash. Um, so I'm trusting that at some point they'll post these decks somewhere or if you're interested, uh, you could do an uh, unsplash search for any of the artists that are listed here, acknowledging that they're freely sharing their work and I wanted to support that as well. I do have that link to the Joomla code if you're interested in seeing the uh, Techno Wiki's install of Joomla on Ubuntu. So that is uh, my overview of what is essential about Joomla. Joomla as code, Joomla as community, and Joomla as culture. 
my stomach is full, my feet are warm, um, and it's been an inspiring experience for me. I hope there's been some value for all of you that have uh, listened in on this first session of J and Beyond 2020. Um, I did promise that I'd go about a half hour and leave some time for um, questions or comments uh, in the interim. Uh, I know that other uh, the Joomla Shack conference did have an opportunity between sessions for people to stretch and, and uh, refresh their beverage. Um, so I'm going to uh, invite uh, David to let me know if there's been any questions or comments that it might be beneficial to me to uh, to respond to uh, from a broader uh, listening audience. How are we doing, David? Well, so far, feedback is uh, very positive, um, and uh, the message uh, that you transported, um, yeah, uh, is well received. Um, personal question: uh, What was your first Juma conference? Were you attending the, the, the JWC in St. Jose? Uh, no, I was not there. I actually, um, so I had shared earlier in my presentation that I've been using Joomla since Mambo. Okay. And for the first six or seven years, I was vaguely aware that this thing called the community existed. Um, but the first person I met uh, was Jess Dunbar down here in Milwaukee. And uh, I went to an SEO presentation that she did and um, talked to her briefly afterwards. And uh, we were both excited to meet another Joomla person. And she really was the first person anywhere I met anywhere that was using Joomla in any context. And she said, well, if this is exciting to you, you should go to Boston this fall. And so my first uh, Joomla, my first Joomla event was a world conference and it was in Boston uh, in 2013. I, I, it's it's striking to me how similar those experience for people are how how, how mind blowing and and way changing the very first in person meeting with Juma people can be. Uh, it's always the same kind of feedback. People weren't aware that this whole community thing, those people even exist, and once they've they've met, they can't stop. Um, that's that's my biggest takeaway from the last couple of years running events. Uh, it's really changing people's lives. Yes, yes. I, it's the other piece that's fun for those of us, obviously, they're doing technology all the time, is the uh, comparison of what tools we were using before Joomla. So I always find the discussions of other uh, PHP-based content management systems or Dreamweaver or, you know, long since defunct proprietary solutions. So it's just sort of fun knowing that we were all sharing that journey at the same time, but separate. And uh, I, I, that's the piece that blows me away is how effectively, uh, part of the reason I'm so passionate about the values is the entire brand of Joomla is so incredibly consistent. From the logo to the name all together to the values that it promotes. And um, it's just such an appealing thing. And there's so many people, when we're at our best, I think that's what makes the community that you're talking about so cohesive. We've shared those life experiences and when we meet other people that have been on that journey with us, it's it's electric. It's just truly exciting. So and I that's certainly been my journey and just about everybody else I meet at these events. So yeah, totally agree. Okay, so now other questions popped up. Just a ton of Juma love in the chat. Um, love it. And a lot I'm of people to read those that. Later. <laughs> Okay. Are you get those comments from the uh, recorded stream, David. Sorry. Are those comments going to be part of the recorded stream? Um, the, the the chat remains uh, available um, uh, for at least ten more hours, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. uh, and uh, we'll also make sure to copy paste it outside so people can follow it afterwards. Um, just as a side note, we are also recording each and every session individually, um, so uh, you'll be able to to rewatch. Uh, your your most favorite sessions afterwards um if you can't get enough no big deal uh, we'll have it for you okay well um thank you brian for opening this online conference thanks for sharing your thoughts and the the tons of joomla love and positivity um we're now doing a short break i am handing over the moderation seat uh, to robert uh, and going to take a rest for well probably around about four hours and then i'll be back um, because we're organized in shifts here uh, in order to be able to bring GMP on to you for 24 hours, uh, 24 hours straight. 
um yeah short break and then we'll be back again in uh 18 minutes thank you great thank you very much it's a real honor to have the uh, open slot at your event and thank you again for all the hard work you're doing an amazing job you're very welcome